Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Uh, I hope you and your family are in a great health. Today we have my team. We are from Engineering Team Project Group 51. We'll do the evaluation of design concept presentation. So the title of our project is Multi-Purpose Screening Device (MSD). So you can see there. That's our slogan: The greatest wealth is health. Okay, doctor. As you can see, the table of contents. There are six main points that we are going to talk about today. First is about introduction of the project. Second is about the project. And the third point is project goals. And fourth, the design concept of this project. Fifth, the economical and business consideration. And lastly, the validation of product. Okay, before we start, let me properly introduce ourselves. First, my name is Umar Muzaffa bin Muhammad Fikri. I'm from Mechanical Engineering Department. And next, we have Muhammad Faris Hanafi, which is also from Mechanical Engineering Department. And next, we have two team, uh, group mates that are from uh, Chemical Engineering Department, which is Fakrul Shahril Izani bin Zulkifli and Muhammad Khairi bin Nordin. And lastly, we have another group mates that are from Petroleum Engineering Department, which is Abang Muhammad Luqman Arif bin Abang Nordin. Okay, let's move on. About the project, MSD is a multi-purpose screening device that combines some important functions for the requirements of SOP before entering or visiting a public place such as first point it measures and record the body temperature of a person second it record personal information from Malaysian identification card either my card or my kit via card reader and three it captures the image of the user and fourth dispense the hand sanitizer automatically where these features make the device to become a contactless device to avoid any spreading of germs or virus through the device okay the theme of our project is aligned with sustainable development goals sdg number 11 and the target 11.7 which is sustainable cities and communities so basically, we provide access to safe and exclusive green and public spaces. Moving on to the next part, which are project background, problem statement, and project objective. Let me start with project background. For the project background, as first COVID-19 case in Malaysia happened on 25th of January 2020, the number of active cases keep increasing from time to time until the government decided to cut off this problem by restricting the movement of nation where movement control order or known as MCO have been introduced. This order consists of four phases started from 18 of March 2020 until 12 of May 2020 which lasted about three months. Then it has been changed to new order known as Conditional Movement Control Order or CMCO which have been implemented in our country starting from 13 of May 2020 until 9 of June 2020. Reaching the end of CMCO, the government have lift up some restriction order starting from 7 of June 2020 where we can see that the reopening of some sector such as education sector, economic sector, tourism sector, and also sport and recreation sector. However, the removal of this restriction order come out with strict SOP that needs to be followed by all Malaysian. In the meantime, we observe the way that the SOP have been done have some flaws, which we will explain more in the next slide. Therefore, we decided to come out with this project idea in order to make sure the implementation of SOP could be done in more effective, safer and faster way. For the next part, 
I will explain more about the problem that we have been identified during the process of SOP's implementation. The problems are as follow. First, by experiencing it by ourselves, it shows some flaws during the process where some premises did not check the body temperature of visitors or customers that enter the premises due to the fact of lack in manpower to do the temperature recording. This could become one of the factors the disease keep from spreading as no early detection have been done to segregate the one with symptom and the one with no symptom, which this could make the situation become worse from time to time. Secondly, the both methods which have been practiced nowadays, which are QR code scanning and logbook recording, seem to be time consuming as the personal information need to be write down or key in manually which it could take some time. As the waiting time become longer, it could be troublesome especially for older people, people with chronic disease, pregnant women or others to be in the queue for quite some time. Other than that, for the recording of personal information through logbook, the physical contact with the book and the pen itself could increase the possibility or risk to spread the disease where we should make sure the surrounding is safe for everyone. Moreover, the information obtained cannot be verified whether the information is true or not as the individual might fake their identity when filling up either the online form or the logbook itself. The information needs to be correct for the tracing purpose as it will be easier to track people when the information collected is correct. The other problem with the logbook record method is that the personal information written by an individual cannot be guaranteed to be safe as everyone has the access to the personal information which makes this method the less secure method to keep the personal information. In addition, for the QR code scanning method, the disadvantage can be seen is that the method is unpractical for everyone as it requires access to the internet and availability of smartphone which some people may not have the smartphone or the access to the internet where usually the people who live in rural area, older people and children. By looking at this mentioned problem for the practical of SOP, we believe that by inventing our project could become a solution for all these problems. For the third part, let's have a look of the project objective that we want to achieve. So the first objective of this project is we want to make sure the personal information of users will be kept safely from any unwanted parties that could bring harm to the users, whereby the using of smart card reader will help to store all the information securely. Next, the second objective of this project is we want to make sure when using our device there is no physical contact with any object or any surface. Other than that, we also want to make sure the time taken during the process of our device could be reduced so that the waiting time for the users could be decreased from the time of using the existing methods which are the QR code scanning and also the logbook recording. Last but not least, combining all these processes in one device could ease the customers to follow the SOPs but this could make our device to be a multi-purpose or multi-functional device. By looking at all our objective for this project, we have come up with some keywords to describe our project briefly. The keywords are secure, safe, time saving, contactless, and multi-purpose. Before I pass to the next presenter, let me recap what I've been discussed about. So the first part, I've been discussed about the project background, where we get the idea to invent the project. The next part, I have been discussed about the list of problems that we need to solve. And the last part, I've been discussed about the problem objective or the project objective that we want to achieve. 
Alright, thank you Uma for the explanation. Now let's discuss on the dimension and label part of the device. Alright, so for the design concept of this device, it's basically like any other self-service kiosk. We implement two industrial revolution tools 4.0, known as IR 4.0. Uh, which is in uh, for our case is AutoCAD software and Arduino. Here are the schematic drawings of our device in third projectile view, and all the lengths are in centimeter. This one from the top view. This one for the from the front view, right side view, and this one is the overview of the whole model. For the height of this device, we decided to settle for 174.95 cm. This is because the average height of nation citizen is between 170 to 173 cm. This model has 7 components which include LED lights as indicator, IC scanner, LCD screen, a camera, an automatic hand sanitizer and two sensor which is temperature sensor and ultrasonic sensor which is for detecting movement the back of this device head can be opened like a door to put tablet and also refill the hand sanitizer the hand sanitizer is placed on the left side of the device because most of Malaysian citizens are right handed to summarize my part, I have talked about the design dimension and label parts. Uh, next, I will be covering on flow diagram of project workflow, uh, material selections and cost consideration. Okay, for the flow diagram, uh, this, this flow chart, uh, we are using our software VCO, Microsoft VCO, for us to construct uh, the flow chart so that it will easier to be used and it is it is very proper to make uh, any uh, flow 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 diagram okay so for this project uh, the device will start by initializing all the variables sensors and the outputs like lcd to be zero like like here i use uh, n shows that it is the head count is equals to zero and the LED will show yellow in color to show that the device is ready to be used and then uh, the device will prompt the user to insert their identification card or we call as IC so after that it need to be satisfy two conditions for the device to proceed with the next process so for the first one is the user must insert their IC into the device and the second one is uh, the user must located less than 1.5 meter from the device which is detected from our ultrasonic sensor so when when either one of the conditions is not satisfied the process will continues back to the first step which is after display the IC so if both conditions are satisfied we can the device will input the data from the card reader so the card reader will will detect the all the information from the card so that it will be saved in the database and after that uh, the device will prompt the user to face the camera so that we can snap the face of the user to be saved together with the, uh, the our database and then uh, while the the user is facing to the camera uh, the temperature sensor will get the value of the temperature of the user uh, so that it will it will detect the temperature of the user so from that value of temperature uh, we can classify the temperature either is more than 37.5 or less than 37.5 degrees celsius so when the temperature is more than 37.5 uh, the LED will show red in color while if temperature is less than 37.5 uh, 
the, the LED will show green in color. So when the LED shows the colors, either it is red or green, um, it will the device will display the temperature of the user by using the LCD. The, and the value is get directly from the temp, the contactless temperature sensor, so that the user will know what is their temperature. Uh, that is detected from the uh, temperature sensor. So after all this process are complete, so the head count will be added by one. So like like here, for example, uh, the head count is initially the value is zero. So after one user is completed all this process, so the head count will be added by one. So the final value is going to be one. And after that, uh, the the condition of the LCD will be reset. So either it is red or green, it will turn back to yellow. And then the process continues to be looped until uh, the button at the device is pressed. Uh, it is purposely to either rebuild or to shut down the device. So that's all for flow diagram. Next uh, is the justification on material selections. Okay, so for the IR 4.0 tools, we are mainly using is the Arduino Uno. So the purpose of Arduino Uno is it is easy to use to process the data with the multi-choice pin out and pin in. So the pin out is actually we use to signal the from the Arduino to the output. Like for example, we use uh, LCD and LED and we have also pin in for at the Arduino interface uh, to get to actually use to get the value from the inputs like sensors. So actually Arduino is where we put the codes uh, by using the Arduino software by using the computer and then it's saved into the Arduino and the program is run from the Arduino. So the Arduino is capable of process arithmetic calculation to ease the data processing. Like for the simple examples here from the flow diagram, like the previous slide, uh, the headcount is basically after the process complete, the headcount is increased by one. Uh, so this is basically the simple arithmetic calculation that is used in this project. And the good thing about Arduino is it is cheap and available in the market. So basically, Arduino is can be buy can be buy from 
uh, Lazada or Shopee or maybe you can get buy the Arduino at the company directly itself Okay, so next for the Smart Identification ID Card Recognizer Memory Card Reader So, uh, this is actually quite useful for us to be collect data from the user So, it will no, long, it will no longer need to be write, write name So, it just directly uh, get the data from the 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 small chips from the from the card so uh, this this card reader can identify sim cards and read cards quickly comply with major smart card and related industry standard because it is very convenient and because uh, this microchip can store lots of data so instead of we write one by one manually so by using this card reader uh, we can get tons of data directly and very very fast the the data transfer and the good thing about card reader is it is lightweight and small in size so because it is uh, in card form so it can be carried anywhere instead of we having tons of papers which is uh, quite uh, unreliable for us to use it every day and the third one is we have infrared temperature sensor it is capable of detecting temperatures at a certain distance and the good thing is uh, it is compatible with the Arduino software and the Arduino components uh, because this temperature sensor is under Arduino, is Arduino itself so uh, it can be also be used as the add-ons to our uh, prototype so the good thing is the temperature sensor uh, it using infrared so uh, when the temp when the user uh, produce heat so the infrared will detect the amplitude of the infrared content uh, so uh, it can uh, give the value of the temperature by detecting the amplitude of the infrared and this sensor works well with the wide range of other microcontrollers so like, uh, so microcontrollers is basically like uh, to to reduce the to reduce the uh, noisy noisy val noisy values. Uh, so the controllers is can be can be developed so that uh, depends on our purpose of using the sensor. And then the last one is uh, the ultrasonic sensor. So the ultrasonic sensor is easy to measure distance with an Arduino or other microcontrollers. So ultrasonic sensor uh, is functioned by sending out a pulse of sound and listen for the echo. So like basically the ultrasonic sensor uh, produce some waves. So um, when when the wave detects an object it will reflect back to the ultrasonic sensor, ultrasonic sensor. so uh, actually it will directly take the time of of how long it will take for the wave to uh, go back to the ultrasonic sensor so uh, when it because we assume that the the wave has constant velocity so from the velocity uh, we can we can get the time from the input from the ultrasonic sensor and it will be automatically calculated to get the uh, distance so it will it is very reliable for us to detect and uh, movable objects constantly because uh, it produce constantly uh, waves and it will constantly uh, detect the uh, values of the distance so that's all for justification on material selection. Okay, for the next one is the cost consideration. Okay, so overall the price is approximately about two hundred fifty and ninety eight cents, and I think it is affordable uh, for any companies or supermarkets to use this device. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, uh, the price is quite affordable. And I, I want to highlight some of the components uh, need, that I need to uh, that I need to explain 
that I need to explain. So like for example, we have identification card recognizer, uh, this card reader, uh, the price is 70 ringgit. Uh, so actually, uh, it is worth uh, for the project to have this card reader. My answer is yes, uh, because uh, this uh, this card reader can get the value of tons of data from uh, the microchip that is placed on a card. So uh, this technology can actually help this device to to be able to get the data uh, faster so that uh, when there are lots of users want to use this this device uh, it will be no problem because uh, the time will be shorter so uh, and it is very user friendly because uh, it takes shorter time to get the data and to process by using the Arduino and uh, the other one is the contactless temperature sensor which is the price is 39 ringgit uh, because we want it to be everything to be contactless so that's why I take this uh, components to be used instead of other temperature sensor because uh, what I see that uh, other temperature sensors is not actually uh, contactless because uh, sometimes uh, it need to be touched that means it surface to surface contact so uh, we don't want that so that's why we using contactless temperature sensor uh, which is 39 ringgit so uh, it, it is still affordable uh, compared to the other components and the other components like for the processor itself the Arduino is really cheap is 18 ringgit only uh, and the camera is about 25 ringgit and 90 cents uh, which uh, which is still acceptable for the price of a camera compared to the other brand and and the other minor components such as uh, aquarium air pump tube is used to for our hands in it for our contactless hand sanitizer uh, that's why we are we are putting two alternate hand sensor one for this main device and the other one is to be used for the hand sanitizer so compared to the other projects uh, this is a uh, kind of affordable and it is since this project is very basic so uh, the price is actually is actually good for this for this basic design okay so that's all for the cost consideration let's proceed to the customer satisfaction rating in this section we will assess the validation of our product in several aspects that we have stipulated the aspects include safety aspects efficient aspects user friendliness health concern the overall appearance of the design and the last one would be affordability in the survey, we have chosen only 10 respondents among the people who are currently experiencing trouble in current method whereby the record of body temperature and personal information are self-written, which means the, uh, the process are being done manually. Apart from that, we have graded the satisfaction level in a linear scale whereby the number one implies that the customer is not satisfied. As it increases to five, it shows that respondents are more satisfied satisfied towards our design concepts in this slide i will cover the first three aspects the first three aspects would be safety features in the design this aspect investigates whether our design complies with safety regulations or not it means that the design has no explosive substances sh sharp edges and chemical hazards from the results as we can see in the bar bar graph majority of the respondents are satisfied on the design safety features which quantifies around 90 percent of them rated at this level secondly efficiency aspects efficiency means the time taken for the end user to undergo the screening process higher efficiency means that uh, less time consuming 80 percent of the respondents are satisfied on the efficiency of this design it means that this device is very useful and time saving to scan the person prior to entering the place. Uh, the third aspect uh, would be user friendliness. Uh, this aspect assess whether our design provides clear procedure on how to use the device. Since we have provided 
uh, the, the respondents the video simulation in our survey therefore the respondents could have a look on the flow process of this design from the results 90% of the respondents are satisfied that our design is very convenient in terms of a way to operate it the fourth aspect would be health concern this aspect identify whether our design are risk-free and secure especially during this COVID-19 outbreak uh, since our device are contactless, which means it, it, it does not involve any physical contact from the user, the results showed that majority of the respondents are satisfied with the health concern aspect in the design. The fifth aspect would be external factor on the physical appearance on the design. We have designed the project in a way that it has futuristic element in it. As we can see on the bar graph, 80% of the respondents satisfied with the design of the project. Sadly, only 20% of them suggested that the design should be improved so it is relevant as per its functions. The last aspect that we have assessed would be affordability or pricing of the project. So in the survey, we have made it clear that our target customer would be the owner of the company. So if the price is set on uh, 300 ringgit, most of the respondent would be agreed to buy this device if they are the owner of the company. I have talked about the validation of this project. Let's proceed to the implications and recommendations on the project. Most of the respondents stated that this project will be useful to create a better and virus-free surrounding, especially during this pandemic. Also, some of them thought that this device would be great approach for the public to obey the standard operating procedure or SOP as being stated by the government. Besides that, some of them responded that this device would be convenient for the authority or the owner of the company to detect if there is infected people entering their places. Let's move on to the recommendation based on the perspective of the end user. One of the respondents suggested it would be great if we can provide adjustable height poles so that it can be used for the kids. But the most exciting ideas that we have found is uh, enabling the cloud storage or remote access to the project. In this case, uh, Wi-Fi connection is very necessary. We will consider all the recommendations in, our, in order to improve our project. To conclude my parts, I have talked about validations of the project, implications and recommendations. Let's conclude our video presentation on the design concept evaluation. Should you have any inquiries, please do not hesitate to ask us through WhatsApp group or Microsoft team. Last word from me, stay safe and have a nice day today and have